Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and welcome to a what I'm hoping is going to be a single video on repair of this uh, rather unique pipe. This pipe is from uh, the Greek uh, maker Konstantinos Anastasopoulos and he is a um, pipe carver living in Athens, Greece and he makes some very very unique pipes. Uh, this one is in his Mitos style, and that's referring to this very unique uh, form of rustication that you see here. Uh, there's basically a threading that runs completely all around. Um, mitos uh, is the Greek word for thread, I believe, and the reason he calls it Mitos is that it's reminiscent of the thread that was used by uh, Theseus to navigate the labyrinth at Minos, uh, that, uh, or I'm sorry, in Crete, uh, and ultimately to defeat the Minotaur in Greek legend. So really cool background story, very, very beautiful uh, rustication work. Uh, I'm not sure how he does that. I'm guessing this might be laser engraved, but really a beautiful effect. So the reason this pipe has come to me, and by the way, it is from our friend Tamper Tantrum, uh, and if you're not familiar with Tamper Tantrum's channel, I will put a link down below. You definitely should go check him out. He's got some really, really good content. Uh, the reason he sent it is that there is a crack in the pipe, and I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this. Sometimes a little bit more light helps, so we'll see if we can highlight that a bit. And you can see that there's a stamping there, that little square. It's a square with a K and an A in it, and that's... Uh, uh, Constantinos's um, stamp and then up here there's a number uh, the number is 8013 uh, that means that it is the 80th pipe that he made in 2013 uh, unfortunately you can see that crack is running right through or I hope you can see that that crack is running right through the stamp and I'll get a pointer here so that I can hopefully point that out to you a bit better and maybe zoom you in a bit as well So the crack is running right along there, and it's coming all the way down to here. Now it's actually not terribly surprising that this pipe is cracked, and I will show you why that is the case. Uh, this pipe is actually a reverse calabash. And you can see there's a there's a large chamber in here that links up with the tobacco chamber down here. And you can see the walls of that mortise are really quite thin on the top and bottom. You know, the sides are no issue, but that top and bottom are really, really thin. Uh, in fact, just out of curiosity. I have not done this yet, but yeah, so that, that's coming in at just 50 thousandths. That's really thin for Briar. And, you know, of course, to get the stem to fit, there has to be something of a, of a friction fit. And this tenon is almost exactly 750. So three quarters of an inch on the nose. And if we measure the inside of the mortise, you can see it's, it's just slightly less than that, you know, maybe about uh, five um, thousandths less, but, and it has to be, you know, or else the stem won't stay in, but that's going to be applying outward pressure on, on this entire circle here and the weakest points are going to be the top and bottom so i believe that you know this is a design flaw and that it was essentially inevitable that it was going to crack uh, and it did crack and we can fix that unfortunately because that is so thin we have really no option except to band the pipe and you know that's going to be a rather large band and unfortunately it's going to disrupt both the the stamping on the pipe but also a lot of this really cool 
rustication is going to be lost when we put this band on. But it has to be that wide because the crack is running all the way down to here. Um, basically the entire depth of that mortise. Um, yeah, there's just no way that we can we can get away with this. So the plan is going to be to take this band and make it fit over this pipe and then put it back together and send it off to uh, tamper tantrum. Easier said than done because you might have noticed that is not a circle and the band is. So I sized the band simply by measuring the circumference and I'll show you if you're interested. It's, it's really basic uh, math here, uh, but or I guess it's geometry. I measured the circumference around here just by putting a piece of tape around it and cutting the tape so that it was uh, flush from one end to the other, taking that off and measuring it. And I got a value of 3.145 inches, converted that to millimeters because these bands are all uh, measured in millimeters. Use the equation for the circumference of a circle to actually go ahead and calculate the diameter. And I wound up with this value in inches, which converts to 25.42 millimeters. So I got a 25 millimeter band, which is uh, fortunate because that's the largest one that I could find. <laughs> there, there was nothing bigger than this. Um, so the idea is we will be able to squish this down to the same size oval that this is minus 0.4 millimeters and we may have to do a little bit of sanding and we will expand this with heat and hopefully we'll be able to to get that on there without too much difficulty now the problem is how are we going to shape it so i could try to just squish this with my fingers these are not very uh, difficult to, to bend, but I'm afraid I'm going to put a kink in it and I'd really rather avoid doing that. So I'm going to go through a somewhat complex procedure. Uh, I've taken, this is a piece of basswood, which is uh, very good for hand carving. I turned a uh, tenon on the end of it that is the same diameter as the tenon on the stem. And I can use that to mount the piece of wood directly to the pipe. Now what I can do is I can shape this to the same shape as the pipe and I will taper it and then I'll be able to slide this band over it and by pushing it down it will assume the shape as it gets closer and closer to the end. So we should be able to use that as a mandrel to shape this so that it will be easier for it to fit over the pipe. So, I am going to go ahead and do all my shaping, and then I'll bring you back when I'm ready to uh, actually start doing the work on the pipe. Okay, so we have formed this, and it is actually not a bad fit for the, the pipe, as you can see. Uh, it's a little bit uh, more narrow, which is good. Um, I don't want to get it stuck on here. But what I'll probably do is, is bring the band up as far as it can go. Probably not bring it off on this end. That'll still get me to the right shape and then I'll take it off. So we don't need to keep this on the pipe to do that. I'll set the pipe aside. And we'll just briefly examine the band and see if there's anything about it in terms of one side or the other. Sometimes there's you can see there's a bit of beveling um, as you come to the end of the band here and that's also present on this side so there's no need to uh, consider one side up and one side down or anything like that so let's see what happens here so goes on about halfway which is good and now I'm just gonna work it down there trying to just apply pressure down on the band. I'm not trying to squeeze it at all. Now that's as, about as far 
see if I can do it like this. Nope, that's about as far as I'm going to get it on there. And again, I want to be careful not to get it stuck. So now I'm going to apply a little bit of sideways pressure just to get it to conform a bit. And see if I can wiggle it down a little bit further. We do have to keep in mind that this is going to be heated and we're probably going to sand a tiny bit of briar off the, the um, outside of the, the shank. So this will fit. Alright, that looks good. Let's see if we can get it back off now. There we go. Very nice. So that is, yeah, we need, we need to do a little bit of work to get it to fit, but it's close. It's close to the right shape. Much better than it was when it was a circle. So this is obviously a single use tool. Um, I'm, not, I'm not likely to ever get another pipe that's exactly this shape, but uh, yeah, it's basswood. I can carve it into a, a little gnome or something. So, we'll, um, next we're going to work on uh, preparing this for the receiving the band. And the first thing I'm going to do, you'll notice as I put this in, I made it a little bit tight. And hopefully you can see that has opened up that crack a little bit. Uh, the crack being right along here. So I'm going to take advantage of that to get some thin super glue in there. Just let it soak into that crack and then I'll take this out and it'll clamp back up itself. And then after that's done, I'm going to, I seem to have gotten a gnat in the shop somehow. I'm going to take the diameter of this band and use this tool. And you've seen me use this before. Uh, if you haven't seen this, you can go back and check the Bing's favorite uh, restoration work that I did, which was also a banding. Uh, but this is just a type of marker that will let me go ahead and, and put a line around where this band is going to come to. I'll use some tape to mark that off. And then I'll do a little bit of light uh, sanding because obviously I don't have a lot of material to sand here. Uh, but since it's going to be replaced by metal, it's okay to thin this out just a bit. So that's what we'll work on, and uh, I'll bring you back when we're ready to put the band on. So I didn't want to just jump straight to the end here without uh, filling you in a bit on what I was trying to describe earlier. So what I've done here is, uh, first off, I've glued that. And you can see some of the, the super glue there, and that'll be filed away, so don't worry about it. I wrapped it with uh, this layer of painter's tape. Um, it's, it's about two complete wraps, and that's to give me a little bit of an edge there. I'll explain why in a minute. I then used this marking gauge that was set to the height of the, uh, the band to cut through the tape. And what that's now given me is a demarcation of where I need to reduce the outer diameter of this or the outer circumference of this. And a little bit of a ledge that I can use as I'm filing it. So what I'll probably do, or the way I usually do this, is I'll hold my finger there so I can let it right up against my thumbnail as well as the tape, and that'll prevent it from slipping. And I will just, and I'm not even going to do a full stroke here because this is really delicate work, but I will just take very careful swipes and take the same number of swipes all the way around. And that's important because I want to consistently decrease this outer uh, wall thickness. And obviously I need to do very little of that because I've, I don't have a lot of wall to decrease here. Again, it, it's going to be replaced with metal, so it's okay. Uh, but it's going to be a bit fragile until we get the band on. So that's the next step. Um, and I'm going to do that off screen just because it's it's very uh, careful, finicky work, and I don't want to mess it up. 
So I'll bring you back when I'm ready to fit the band. All right, so hopefully you'll be able to see that I've just slightly reduced the diameter on this. Uh, I keep saying diameter, height. The perimeter, there's the word I'm looking for. Perimeter. Um, it's a very slight difference, but it does have this band just almost fitting now. And that's what I want. So the heat expansion will mean that it'll slip on relatively easily and then when it cools it will clamp down and will essentially never come off. So I'm going to do one more step before I put the band on and that is I'm going to stain with this uh, dark brown leather dye this area that I've filed. The reason I want to do that is and, and I don't really have to do the whole thing I just want to get this seam because if just in case this doesn't quite sink all the way down I'll be there won't be an obvious line of raw briar there and it's easier to do it now than it will be once the band is in place so to do that i'm just going to take a um, regular old pipe cleaner put a little bend in it you've seen me and probably others do this before and get a little bit of the dark brown stain on the pipe cleaner and just go around like so. And this is really just a little precautionary step that will potentially mask a, uh, a visual defect there. And we'll let that dry. And I will, I'm, you know, I'm going to be buffing this pipe after everything is done. That excess stain will just buff off um, if it's exposed. So it's not going to be any worry in terms of the, the final finish. So while that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and heat up the band. And to do that, I'm going to hold it just on this little dental tool over the heat gun like so and when it's done I'm gonna bring it over here and drop it down pick this up position it and sink it down so I will edit out the next part because it's just gonna be the noise of a heat gun running off screen Ow, that is still hot. Still not quite. It's close, but it's just not quite ready. All right, well, more filing. More filing. side.
There we go. So now we're going to let that cool down and we'll clean the pipe up and we'll be done. The cleanup was relatively minor. Um, I just sort of lightly buffed the stem. Uh, there, there's actually some interesting graining in the stem that I don't know if it'll show up or not, but it's almost like a faux wood grain that goes around this um, initial part of the stem here. Uh, quite interesting. And I didn't want to obviously buff too much because I don't want to get rid of that, but I, I buffed the stem up a bit, waxed it um, very carefully, buffed and waxed the upper surface of this because I didn't want to get any wax buildup in any of the, um, the mitos uh, rustication here. So I just put some uh, microcrystalline wax on that and, and uh, buffed it. <clears throat> so that's about it. Uh, the stem fits quite nicely. Um, actually a little bit too nicely. There we go. Uh, nice and tight and obviously with that band in place this is going to be uh, perfectly safe for many many years to come. Uh, I wish there was some way we could have done it without occluding the um, the KA stamping, but unfortunately the design of this pipe, this was inevitably going to happen. Fortunately, we still have the serial number here, and this Mitos rustication is very characteristic of uh, Constantinos Anastasopoulos, so uh, I'm sure no one would doubt that this was actually a KA pipe. Anyway, I hope that uh, you enjoyed that. I'm going to get this pipe back to Tamper Tantrum so he can go back to enjoying smoking it. And I would be happy to have you uh, like or comment on this video. If you're not subscribed and you want to keep up, to, keep up on future videos, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.